This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Secret Square. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, No, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um... Episode of Vast Wasteland, the video journal of pop culture. <clears throat> yes, I am Wilbert Neal. Are you sure? Yeah. I Last time I checked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I must be Marty J. Wiley. <laughs> and tonight we're talking, what is this, the potpourri? Yeah, this is the potpourri it's portion. Of, yeah. of That's... the video guide to the pop culture. <laughs> We're talking about toys and games tonight. But before we get into all the fun and... <laughs> we didn't, we missed a good chance. <laughs> all the fun and excitement you see here in front of us and around us, I'll tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on ACTV Cable 21. And if you wish to write us, which in fact two people, not just one, but two people did this time, we're at box. We're Vast Wasteland, Post Office Box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Write early and often. We and love legibly. to hear from you. <laughs> so we're going to go right into these letter things Yes, here. let's go into the letter things here. Well, the first one I have is from Kimberly Pepple, who writes extremely neatly. Isn't that nice? Yes, she looks like she uses a ruler to get the line straight. It doesn't matter. It's incredibly nice. It says, to whom it may concern, which is us today, I saw your show about dolls of the 1960s and 1970s. I had one of the Tippy Toes dolls and would be interested in buying one. Any ideas on who I might contact? Any help would be appreciated. Thanks. And she gives a name and an address and she finds it in a real nice cursive. And hmm. Hmm. Well, I have mine, but that's mine that I've had forever and ever. And 
I'll give you a call, and I think of, I can think of a couple of places that may be able to locate it. If anybody out there knows of some place where you can locate Tippy Toes, which was a little doll that, did I have a ride a bike? Um, Across you had the, the bike table. with her. Well, she rode a bike, rode a horse. If you held a little hand, she walked. Uh, if anybody's got any ideas, call or write us, because you can't call us. Well, so you I can. know some of you have. <laughs> you can call us, but we just won't hear you. And then um, I also know there's a toy show that they have. Um, well, I guess it's be a, bi a, a biannual toy show here in the city that um, it's usually like in May and then one in September where they have all sorts of old toys, so it's possible they could have one there as well. Yeah. So. So you got a letter to read. Yeah, I've got a letter to read. Addressed to the Vast oh, Wasteland crew. That camera. Dear Vast Wasteland. A friend of mine and I were talking recently, and we were trying to remember that gorgeous babe who played Wonder Woman, the original. Well, you don't mean the original Wonder Woman, because that was Kathy Lee Crosby, and that's you, nobody wants to know about her. <laughs> no, we're talking about the, the nicer looking one, the one with the dark hair, the one with the, the good look, the suit that matched the comic books. We're talking Linda Carter. Thank you, Dave. That's who it was. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Boy, we just couldn't think of that last name at all. But anyway, it's Linda Carter. And it's signed, I want to marry a woman like her. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can find a woman like her, then more power to you. <laughs> and this letter is not written very neatly. Oh, well. But in the meantime, it's toys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh last time... Deuce flash. Last time we were talking about Barbie and Ken as part of the uh, the thing here. Barbie and Ken. And dolls. And this is like the original Barbie, the first Barbie and the first Ken. Is. But anyway, in the news, there is a Barbie slasher that's just been going to toy stores and slashing Barbie's naughty bits. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that Barbies not actually like have any, but well, anyway, still, they've been sure. going and slashing them. And the newspaper reports that this may be the work of a sexual deviant. <laughs> just maybe. Just, just maybe. maybe. Well. Or maybe not. Yeah, it might not be. It could just be an outraged um, somebody that uh, was just mad that they never developed that way or something. Send you know. your theories here. Yes. Well, let's hear your theories yes, on who the Barbie theories. Slasher is. And if you are the Barbie Slasher, send us a letter. <laughs> we want to know why. Tell us why. So that we Not can check our theories. Not that we do anything about it. We're just curious and nosy and such. And it makes darn good reading. Yeah. So, let's talk about toys. You think that make the Time Life books? <laughs> <laughs> Serial killers. You get the next issue. Barbie Slashers. <laughs> I wouldn't hold no, my breath. I can't really say that. <laughs> Toy really mutilators. On, on, on sexual deviants or anything, but it's not impossible. So I can barely pronounce it. <laughs> okay, well, there we are. So, toys. Yes, we got them. <laughs> and we've had them. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, so let's talk about toys here. We've um, brought in mostly games this time. I think that's the topic. <laughs> well, it was toys and games, you know, but... Some toys were like games, other toys, um, other games were like toys. So we've got some toys that are game-like and games that are toy-like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll just rattle on here and then and on and on oh, and on. Like, like games like this. This was the flea circus. I okay. could never figure out how to play this game, but it was sure fun to play with. Yes. Now, was this actually a game or was it a toy? This was actually a game. Hmm. There were cards you drew so that you had to do the little stunts that the card said. Okay. And and the fleas aren't real. <laughs> I think that was the big disappointment in my life. <laughs> They're actually magnets. And so it was like, I don't know, some little science lesson too real cleverly hidden in there so you could learn how magnets attracted and stuff. They didn't come out and say it, but later on I caught on and I quit okay. playing with it. <laughs> Well, see, Mattel was really big on magnetic things because I had a, uh, it was like a pool table kind of thing, except it was awful. It didn't really have legs. It just was the the surface, the pool table surface. And um, you could just play all sorts of different games with that and had these spring-loaded cues and you could... What did that have to do with magnets? Well, there were some of the um, things were were magnetic and you had to hit them so that they would land on the little 
magnetic part and stick there. And that was part of the game, one of the Maybe games. they owe stock in like a magnet company. Something. Mattel was always delving into these interesting little different things. And magnets were definitely quite a part of their their whole raison d'etre, at least in the beginning. Ooh, was that French? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. no, stop that. <laughs> we're talking toys here. Oh, but you spoke French. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now some, some of the toys were um, based on other things, like, well, we've got... Oh! The Adams Family card game. Oh, I can beat that. Which had absolutely nothing to do with the Adams Family, except it was more. This was more like an old maid game, and I think you had to try to end up Not with Uncle, Uncle Fester. Fester. I can beat that. Okay. If you like the TV show, you'll love the game. Beverly Hillbillies. Hey, wouldn't you like to be Granny for a day? Well, not necessarily. This one actually, someone gave me. So I really have no idea how to play it. But I imagine you've got to go to Beverly. Oh, you get a beautiful layout of the home. Do they include the cement pond? Um, negative. Oh, it's just inside the house, okay. Yeah. So, oh, this looks like fun. I can barely contain myself. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, ooh, what's that one based on? TV show or movie? Well, this is, these were basically movies, but they just... Ah, but I got another TV one, okay. and I can get mine a lot faster than you can get yours. I bet you can. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. This is a fun game for those of you who love to watch the show, because basically every episode is, is, uh recounted in this game. You, you be a character and you've got to get the characters and the plot all together at one time, which I think they hardly ever got to do on the show. This was fun. I don't know why they made it, but it's fun. Well, yeah, I know exactly why they made it. They sell it to geeks like they me. Could, they could sell it to people. <laughs> and out here, wherever there is need, there is Sons of Hercules. Yes, the Sons of Hercules game where you have different, there's like four different sons of Hercules, and they have to perform mighty tasks to uh, obtain gold rings. And I think this one was probably the first, um, well, it seems to be very similar to the Dungeons and Dragons type games because you had to roll the die in order for them to accomplish their tasks. And whatever you rolled, that was um, whether or not you accomplished the task or not. And if you did, then you would have, you would receive golden rings to put on the arms of these little Hercules figures. It was just, I have a question. just incredible, yes. It says for ages to 7 to 15. When you were 15, did you stop playing? Did you cry? Was it traumatic? What happened? Well, when, when I was 15, I'm insight. sure this was already stuffed up under the bed, and I didn't even... Um, this is the first time I've pulled this thing out of here in like 20 years or so. <laughs> at least that long, so... No, don't do that. I won't get anything else done. <laughs> Not that you got a lot done anyway, but... Well, we're talking, and boy, we're having a great time. Oh, I guess we've got... What did you call this one here in the front? Oh, well... I mean, it's kind of like we've got opposite ends here. It's like, we've got, like... Parcheesi, the mother of all games, because there were just several games that were based on this Parcheesi, and it says here that Parcheesi is a backgammon game of India. And I could have bought a bra a, brought a, a backgammon set, but I just couldn't really find mine, but Parcheesi, the way it's played and the way the board is made and everything, it's set up. Um, several games are based on this. Sorry was based on Parcheesi. Um, aggravation was based on... Headache was based on Parcheesi. There are just so darn many games that were based on this thing. It's incredible. Oh, you mentioned Aggravation, which was a lot of fun. But if you really thought you were special, you played split-level aggravation. Kind of like the 3D chess on Star Trek. Part of Star the aggravation <laughs> was figuring out how to play split-level aggravation. Very much like the 3D chess on Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> well, which came first? <laughs> um, I think the 3D, 3D chess, chess, chess on Star Trek. Trek. But I noticed that this was made by Lakeside. And Lake Lakeside was a, to was a wonderful to toy, uh, toy company there for a long time. They're the people that brought us Gumby originally and most of the bendable things. And then um, were they responsible for Barrel of Monkeys? Yes. Okay, a Barrel of Monkeys. And then Remember they had a jingle. A Lakeside game. It's easy to play. 
You know, I don't shake remember. up the barrel, pour out the monkeys, put them together one by one. Then the spinner call the shots. <laughs> this ties you up in a knot. Yeah, twister. Twister. Yeah, what was the twister. Point of twister. Well, Twister was a, an icebreaker for parties. Uh huh. <laughs> I bet more than ice got broken. Well. Well. <laughs> right hand blue, left hand red, red, white, yellow, blue, green. <laughs> I was an only child, so I guess games were kind of wasted on me. Hmm, that's I was it. an only child for a long time. Twister is not fun when you're playing with your cousins. No. You had to play with people you don't know, or people yeah. you want to get to know. That's that's the, the whole thing. And I think you've got to be Twister. older than. Seven. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> Even really though everybody will say, well, this fun. is just a kid game. But hey, it's more fun if you're older and you don't know who you're playing with. Or maybe you do. Anyway. Maybe you want to. <laughs> exactly. That's just the whole fun of this. Well, I thought it was new on, on um, some show. What's it called with Matt Frewer? Oh, whatever that thing is. It's the new wacky Matt Frewer show that's yeah. on Sunday evenings he, on Fox. He whipped out the twister and, and, and made a big thing of it to get his daughter's party going. And it really broke the ice. His daughter was embarrassed, but yet it really helped out, and all the kids thought he was swell. Yeah, so get twister, they'll think you're swell. <laughs> Be swell. Play twister. <laughs> Other, other. Okay, now Milton Bradley did a lot of quite oh, a few game games King, too. Eh? They they were that's the game people. In fact, maybe some of those that we had up here were Milton Bradley games. Mm, yeah, your sons of Sons of Hercules is a Milton that's Bradley. A Milton that Bradley. Adam's family card game is a Milton Bradley. Racco! Here's our great Milton Bradley game. Milton did Bradley. I ever play this? No, not at all. Me too <laughs> I just far. remember the uh, the commercial that was just so neat and everything. Did you it was, buy it because the commercial was so I neat? I got it as a Christmas present. Because uh -huh. I know <laughs> I've got some. I'm sorry, I never played this game. I played it I played it a lot. I played it a whole <laughs> lot. Gee, thanks for this present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, write that thank you note now. Because I know there was things like this flea circus had such an impressive commercial. I bought it. Well, I didn't bought it. I begged for it or something. Um, um, you didn't um, bought it? The green ghost down there. Well, how did we get things when we were kids? Yes, yeah, Our parents didn't buy us stuff. No, you had to wait for Santa. Santa? <laughs> and you had to wait for that birthday? Or your grandparents. Or grandparents, yeah. And then you had to be really good. But like green ghost down there. Looks spectacular. Glows in the dark. Really does glow. To this day, this game will glow in the dark. It's probably the dumbest <laughs> game. <laughs> it takes... Four hours to set it up because it keeps falling down. It is just, but oh, it looked good on TV. It looks great. And you know, I this, if I could sue somebody about that. You know, Green Ghost just just brought us in mind of a lot of um, of those great occult games that they had out. There was oh, the Ouija board. board. There was Kabbalah. There was the Barnabas Collins, Collins game. game. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was this haunted house that I know they used to have. But yet I have, I don't, somewhere out there, there's this haunted house. And it's not the, it's not the, it's not the Walt Disney haunted house game. It's not the haunted house games that are out now. No, this is an old one that was out when I was a kid. And it was like this big haunted house. And there were ghosts in the closet. And there were just all kinds of things. And I, I'm almost sure it was a, it was a that. game. But it was, it was, scary it was great. And I never got to get one because it was just so darn big. <laughs> But it was it was a neat toy, and I remember it. I just don't know what it was called. So if you know what that one was called, write and let us know, because I sure don't. And if it's not the one it is, that it was, I'll say, no, it's not that one, he because I'll do. know that it's not, because I remember all the other ones that came out, but yet I don't remember what that one was called. Speaking of games where there were scary things behind the door, played Mystery Date. I guess you didn't play Mystery Date. Well, do you remember the commercials? <laughs> And my Open sisters the would door play. To your oh. <laughs> Basically, like there's like four guys that are like kick that that just are it, and then and then there's like this one guy that looks like a pig farmer <laughs> on a bad day, like he spent the day in the mud with the pigs, and if you got him, oh my goodness, your life was doomed. <laughs> because you know, mystery date was really this told you who you would really be yes. able to marry or something yes, like that. Yes, your whole future was decided on mystery date. Open the door. Which white boy would you date today? <laughs> <Mystery> date. <laughs>
Did they have a black version of Mystery Date? Well, or was it just all white boys behind a white door? Well, they, we could get into the whole racial stereotypical oh, thing in games, but <laughs> it's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about games, and by golly, there were... Um, there were some ideal games that were just incredible. There was Mousetrap. Mousetrap. Did Ideal make the one that blew up? Kaboom. Kaboom. I believe they did. Terrifying game. Well, see, Terrifying. Ideal just kind of got into this thing. It was like um, they had Mousetrap, which basically you had this contraption to go Milk through all out. these, all these different things just so you could catch this mouse. And then there was Crazy Clock, which was well, all of them were Rube Goldberg-esque. And Crazy Clock was truly um, the probably the most Rube, Rube Goldberg-esque of the of the three that I'm going to mention here because um, it starts off doing you turn a crank. Well, Mousetrap actually started off turning a crank, but this one you do something and it ends up this candlestick comes over and hits the guy's foot and he springs out of the bed. Mm -hmm. And it's just all this stuff they go through. And then there's this one, fish bait. Where? Not to be confused with jail bait. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know if we can see the fish here. Well, it's Let's that it green thing. So down we can there. see the fish. Okay. There's the fish right there. Gotta keep this level. This appears to be a game that, not so much to play the game, but to play with. Yeah. Well, that's all three of them were pretty much like that, but. Let, let's see if we can if we can get this thing to work. Who actually knows the rules to mouse trap? Oh, my sister does, because she got it. Hey, that marble's not moving off of there. Mm. <laughs> marble jam, marble jam. Okay, marble jam. Let's get them all down here. And so that means the last one didn't get down from here. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Okay, come on, come on, you marbles, you. I think it's not level. Okay, oh. that's what it is. It's not level anymore. <laughs> Neither are All the marbles get into the boat. Oh! the man flies off the boat into the fish's mouth. Of course, this time the fish just spit him right back out because he tasted nasty. Nasty. Tasted nasty, like a person or know. something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of like that Jaws game. Yeah. The shark, you throw all the junk in and get you. And that's it for you. And here's this one. Skillet, the frying pan maze. Or you've got this, Bradley, this, lovely, this lovely skillet shaped thing and it's, um, it's a maze! It's amazing! It's a maze! Oh, you got a marble in one. there, and you got to try to twist it to get that marble. To Start one marble of the... here! Twist the cover to roll the marble out here! Here and here! Oh no! And but if you don't, that marble just gets hours, washed huh? in there! <laughs> oh, what fun! And you didn't need people around to play it with. No, you could just play this one all by yourself. And this, this one, I think, was one of the first of the puzzle games, as far as puzzle games goes, because then they started having all the puzzles that you could put together well, that were one, shaped anywhere. like different things and everything. The Soma Puzzle, which had a, a charming little commercial with Henry Gibson. Okay. Soma do and Soma don't. And I'm convinced that because I played Soma, I can now play Tetris, like, all night. <laughs> like nobody the same business. basic shapes there and such, like... <laughs> and there's drive you nuts which was uh, I had that one. a um it a had circle thing numbers. and it had um numbers on these on these plastic nuts and you had to turn them you had to arrange them just so that all the numbers were matching mm -hmm. um, every time that a nut touched another one the numbers had to match so yeah. it was it, it was, was just an interesting like it. thing. It's in many pieces now. So what did I do? Well, I went to the store and looked at one that was put together, and I wrote them down <laughs> and, and memorized it. Of course, I've forgotten it. it now, but... I actually slaved over that thing well, to I get figured, it right. Why and worry? He cheated. Why he cheated. worry? He cheated. I had the solution there, you know, and I put it he away. Cheated. I mean, I never did get the game, though. Nobody ever bought me the game. What about Rub well, because you cheated. What about Rubik's Cube? Did you cheat that one, too? <laughs> well, no, I, I did get the books on Rubik's Cube to figure out how to do it. So, um, although I knew some kids, and they just sickened me to no end. They could just take the thing. You'd mix it up any way you want, and they could just take it and go, <laughs> have that thing back together in no time. I had just gotten to the point of being able to figure out slidey puzzles. I mean, I know, the, I know the solution to those, but these kids could do a Rubik's Cube, so that's like three-dimensional slidey puzzle, and... Well, by golly, I, I was just um, obsolete before my time. <laughs>
Was that planned obsolescence? No, it's not planned obsolescence. It's just working on something for so long and finally getting it right and then realizing the world has gone on without you. <laughs> That's what that was. Then, um, well, we were talking about Ideal and their noisy games. Well, this is an Ohio, Ohio art. art. Ooh, oh, Ohio Art. Ohio the art. maker of Etch-a-Sketch and all that. There was a, a thing out called Time Bomb where you had these little, these Boris and Natasha black bombs with a red fuse thing on the top and you twisted it and it would click and you'd throw it back and forth. You'd have like a circle of people and you'd throw it all around and then when it boomed or actually it clicked you on the dead. last person, that person was out and you kept going like that. Well, Ohio Art came out with another thing that was along the same line. Spudsy! Spudsy is hot potato. Well, Spudsy's a hot potato, but he worked the same way. You'd wind him up, and he would tick. And you'd toss him back and forth. You'd toss him back and forth. No, 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 <laughs> he ran into people that don't want to hold him at all. <laughs> so you're just like, you're stuck with him. And you, you toss that guy around. Whoa! <laughs> Thing no, is, no, not to be caught with no. it, but it <laughs> when the time ran out, whoa! No, 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 no. <laughs> and if it did, well, you're out. Then that. you could take it in. <laughs> the next person outside the head. Which is why Spudsy is now a soft thing. He's like a pillow like or a something. Pillow with a ticker in him. It might even be an electronic ticker in there or something. But uh, Spudsy for everybody. <laughs> Spudsy. And that, that face always just reminded me of Nipsey Russell, too. <laughs> That's totally... I think Nipsey, you got a lawsuit here, buddy. <laughs> by the point, but anyway. Because you ain't got a career. Oh, well, anyway. there we are. Um, okay, now down down front here, we've got a, a few other games. Um, let's see, over here I've got Booby Trap. You can't say that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say bra, I can say booby trap. <laughs> but not in the same sense. <laughs> oh, that was a fun one. And basically here you had these these circular circular, circular. discs that you would have to pull out of this spring-loaded thing. And, and then it blew all up at a certain point, got all over the floor, and you had to pick it up. You tried not to move oh, while fine. you were taking the pieces out, because if it moved, then it was the next person's turn. But then you try to get them without making the whole thing just go crazy, and all of them fly out. <laughs> and that was just the whole fun of it. The well, they've kind of mechanized of it now, and they call it perfection. True. But it's the same kind of idea, except with perfection, you don't have so many pieces to pick up off, off the floor. Uh, well, perfection, too, you, you're trying to get them all into the thing and then stop the thing. Stop the timer so they don't thing. blow up. Because otherwise they'll all just spring out. It's like yeah. 52 pickups. Yeah. <laughs> Except there's only 20 pieces. Oh, and then there's the Game of Life, which I basically begged for because they had such a cool song in you their commercial. You can learn about life if you play the Game of Life. You sure can. You learn that life sucks. That's what you <laughs> learn. <laughs> and the Game of Life, I always kind of equate the Game of Life with Monopoly because oh, they, they both had the little houses and things. No, there's little cars in that. Well, well, wait well, there's a houses on the board, but you don't win them or own them. They're just there for decoration. Well, then there's They're another game that had game. houses, too, which was... There's Monopoly, which had little red Monopoly. houses and... Um, no, greenhouses and red red hotels. Monopoly there was another, taught me that I would be poor all my life. <laughs> there was another game, too, that had these little, like, two-story houses, which was neat, and I can't remember what that game was. Two-story Monopoly. <laughs> No, 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 it was, it was like a... Rich bitch monopoly, I don't know. Whatever it was, but this one you had little cars, you could put up to like six little peg oh, people in it. And there's Stay Alive, the survival game. Stay Alive, Stay no, Alive. No, no, different, different, different. I'm the sole survivor. <laughs> that was a little hook in that commercial that yeah. gets you to buy it. And there were things like... um. And we're getting weird signs to us <laughs> from space people. There was that there was that ice game where you'd knock the ice I think out. That's obscene. <laughs> and there was Kerplunk with Don't the pickup sticks through bango, the Bango Bango. Well Cootie <laughs> <laughs> Oh Cootie, I never thought of Cootie as a game. Anyway Anyway, we gotta shut up. I reckon it's time for us to just stop talking I'll about toys and get the we'll heck out of here. <laughs> But next time on uh, Vast Wasteland, it'll be all of us again. It'll be a TV show. And what will we be talking about? TV! <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I forget. I was at the meeting, but there was loud music.
Oh, I hear it'll be Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. The voice of Mark comes from somewhere. Dick Van Dyke. Can we say that on TV? Sure. Yeah. Okay. They said it for years, so right. I guess we can. Okay. <laughs> we'll probably say it a whole lot of it next show. <laughs> laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> but anyway, that, that'll be next time. So, this is Wilbert. Yeah, not somebody. <laughs> and we'll see you then.